Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Tiger, back with another Dokkan battle video. So, a couple hours ago, the French data leaker Kawaii, who we all know and love, hosted this amazing stream on his YouTube channel, where he had a bunch of other Dokkan YouTubers and French data leakers, and they were all talking about the 300 million download celebration, right? And one of the people on this panel was another very familiar name, or at least you should know about him, Team Dokener, and apparently Dokener provided us with some very interesting details about this upcoming celebration, but also just about Bandai and Akatsuki in general and how they like to operate. So in this video, I want to share those details with you guys because like I said, I thought it was super, super interesting. But before we get started, I got to give a huge shout out to uh, Reddit user Torty Tortu for the translations because obviously they were talking in French on the stream. And even though I did take French in the past, I'm not great at it, and I couldn't understand it because they were talking too fast. So thank you to Tori Tortu for the translations, it really really helps. And without further ado guys, let's jump into it and see what Dokener had to say. So the first point he has here is regarding the upcoming LR Gohan, the new LR Gohan, and obviously there is a lot of outrage out there right now, a lot of disappointment regarding the details that came out about the Gohan mainly because of his restriction. People think that he has way too many restrictions on his transformation, on his ability to get his max damage or his full potential. Um, the first thing is you need to be below like 58% HP and you also have to have Android 16 or another Android on your team. There's a turn restriction as well. And then to get his max damage once he transforms, after you get him to transform, you need to have a Super Saiyan Goku on the same rotation, also supering, and it needs to be a 18 key plus super for Gohan to get the full buff on his passive. So uh, there's just a lot of stuff that you need to do to get this guy to his max potential, while for Cell, it's really easy to get there. So uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of disappointment, people hate that, but let me be clear in saying that I don't think the Gohan is bad, guys. Like, to be honest, I feel like even though Cell seems better on paper, the Gohan is still going to be right up there, like among the best units in the game, guys. Trust me. All right, I know it doesn't seem that way right now, but he's, he's still really, really good. He's still going to be quite broken, so uh, don't be too disappointed. But anyways, uh, Dokener says that the LR Gohan, I went on my own tangent there, my bad, uh, was too broken, so they nerfed him. And now we have the current Gohan that we saw earlier today, but apparently he was a lot better. Apparently he was nerfed recently, and the nerfed details is what we got, so... Now I'm just like super interested to see what the Gohan looked like before the nerf, you know, pre-nerf at his like, I guess full potential before. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to get those details, I don't know if Dokener plans to release those, but man, I really want to know what Gohan team looked like and like how broken he really was because at this point he's still pretty good, but it would have been nice if he had less restrictions, so maybe... Uh, he had less restrictions, maybe it was just like a HP restriction or maybe it was only a turn restriction and they decided to give him more because they thought he was going to do too much damage, he was just, just going to like break the game, which I think some people would have been okay with. You know, I saw people like uh, Truth on Twitter was like, yo, I wanted Gohan to be unquestionably the best unit in the game and he didn't turn out that way so I'm kind of disappointed, but at the same time, he's still going to be really good and that's how I feel too. So. Um, I'm not too mad about it to be honest, but I am curious to see what Gohan was supposed to be or what he could have been. And the next point is about the new Android 16, and apparently according to Dokener, he's going to be an int type unit, which is actually very surprising to me because um, I made a comment or I replied to a comment earlier on one of my videos where I was like, I would be shocked if the new Android 16 was not an AGL type unit. And the reason for that is because uh, one of the ways you can get Gohan to transform is to uh, have an Android 16 on your team, right? If you have an Android 16 on your team, I believe it's much easier to get him to transform uh, versus the alternative. And um, obviously there's no Android 16s in the Kamehameha category, at least we're you know, assuming, I think it's a safe assumption, there's no Android 16s in the Kamehameha category, which is Gohan's category that he leads. So the only way you can really put a Android 16 on the team is if we have a AGL Android 16, because the secondary part of uh, Gohan's leader skill is super AGL. So he could at least, you know, bring that 
16 on the team if he's a super AGL unit and he'll benefit from the secondary leader skill. But apparently that's not the case. Apparently Bandai had other plans and he's going to be an int type unit, or at least that's what Dokener knows right now. But he says it can change. It is possible that it could change. Maybe it can still be super AGL. Maybe he'll they'll, they'll change their minds <laughs> and uh, decide to change his typing to make more sense, to align more with the Gohan. Um, you know, once they come out, so anything's possible, fingers crossed, but at the moment, apparently he's an in-type unit, which just makes no sense to me, man. Makes absolutely no sense, and he's gonna be a 120% leader for the Android slash Cell Saga category, which is the new category that's uh, coming with the celebration. And number three is regarding Akatsuki, and apparently Akatsuki begun work on the Gohan and Cell one year ago, and they work with an annual planning, so uh, I assume that means that basically they plan units and celebrations at least a year in advance or maybe like, you know, for the first like big meeting of the year, they plan the whole year ahead or like some, something like that. I don't know. I, I'm just assuming, obviously, I don't know anything for sure, but it makes a lot of sense from a business perspective. You know, they um, obviously want to be able to project profits and things like that. So I guess that makes sense. And I guess if they... Uh, plan units you know that far in advance then there's always gonna be changes that happen when you get there because you never know um, you know what, what things might happen along the way that cause you to need to change a unit or change a celebration and uh, that kind of goes hand in hand with the next point which is that things like the uh, Christmas hit fiasco at least on global my global players can understand this uh, better known as shit miss um, happen and the lack of story events and things like that. Basically, bad celebrations in general happen because of um, apparently Bandai messing with Akatsuki's plan. So if you guys don't know, Akatsuki, I believe, is the publisher. Oh, no, Akatsuki is the, the developer of the game. So they actually make the game and Bandai is the publisher of the game. So in a way, you know, Bandai is kind of Akatsuki's boss. Well, I mean, I guess they are Akatsuki's boss and uh, they have a lot of control, I'm assuming, over what they do. And when we get bad celebrations, um, apparently it's Bandai's fault. It's Bandai's fault for messing with Akatsuki's plans. And I mean, it's something that happens in business, you know, just bureaucracy and things like that. And maybe the Bandai executive team or leadership team um, thinks one thing is better for profits. Well, Akatsuki thinks that something else is better. Maybe something else would be better for the players. But the, the ideologies, the plans don't always line up, right? So maybe because of that, we get bad celebrations so i mean i guess it doesn't really matter too much or doesn't mean too much to us because we can't do anything about it but uh, i could explain some of the uh really bad celebrations like the very underwhelming christmas hit celebration that we got um that could be one of the reasons you know so uh that was just kind of an interesting thing you know not really too relevant to us uh overall and the next point actually blew my mind i'm not gonna lie like that this the next point was absolutely crazy so he says the passives for the lr super saiyan 4s were changed a few nights before they went live now obviously we just got them on global a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago uh how long ago was it how long was the four I, like it was like a month ago right so um doesn't really pertain to us but it's more relevant to jp because jp got them about four or five months ago or even six months ago at this point and uh, apparently before they dropped on jp they were buffed like a couple nights before that um so what what the what the case was was that goku only had 80 percent attack on his passive and no defense and Vegeta had only 80% defense on his passive and no attack. And if you think about it, that is absolutely awful, guys. That is atrocious. Like, for LRs, for anniversary LRs in this day and age, to not have either any defense or any attack, especially Vegeta, man. So Vegeta was the one that had no attack. He only had the defense buff. That's crazy, dude. Like, that would have been so awful. Think about it. Like, how bad would a Vegeta have been? Because here's the thing. We value tanking in this game, obviously, but people, at the end of the day, still care the most about damage numbers. And I'm sure Vegeta would have done, like, still some damage. You know, he still had the LR stats. He still had the, you know, Mega Colossal damage uh, multiplier on his Ultra Super, and he still had the active skill, stuff like that. But... Let's be real, man, like a lot less people would have gone for Vegeta if he didn't have any attack on his passive. And apparently that was the case. Apparently Vegeta had no attack, 
Goku had no defense, so he was gonna be like, I don't know, LR Broly, like 2.0, I mean, you know, STR Broly, like just no defense, right? Uh, that would have been awful, dude. So I'm glad they made that change. I don't know why they even didn't have those before. They had to buff them, but either way, I'm glad they got buffed and now they're awesome. But if they didn't buff them, <sighs> that would have been a bad time, man. Really, really bad time. And the next point I think should get us very excited, especially global players. And uh, I mean, it goes hand in hand with JP players too, because he says, Global banners, the global banners for the LR Cell and the LR Gohan are good, and he is going all in. And if the ba global banners are good, I'm assuming the JP banners will be good as well. So uh, that's a really good sign. That's a really good thing for just us Dogon players. Do Do Did I say Dogon? Dokan players in general. Um, Dokener apparently knows the banners. He says he knows the banners, but won't say because spoiling banners is the thing that Akatsuki hates the most. So. That's interesting. Um, on the one hand, you know, that's kind of his thing. He leaks things or he's a leaker, but at the same time, uh, I understand, you know, respecting a company's wishes in a sense. I kind of respect that. Um, I mean, I do respect that. I don't kind of, I do respect that. Um, maybe it's to stay in their good graces so that they don't make moves to block them in the future from finding out uh, leaks and stuff like that. I don't really know what the, the whole situation is, but I respect it, like I said. I would love to know the banners now, but I'm also respecting the fact that he wants to respect Tchaikovsky's wishes and not release the banners, so that's okay. It's, it keeps the hype going. You know, if we know um, the banners early, then it's a little bit less hype once we actually get them, so that's cool. That's cool with me. And while we don't know what the banners actually look like, yo, if the banners are good enough for Dokener, if they're, they're good enough for him to go all in, then they're good enough for me to go all in, even though, let's be real. I would have gone all in regardless, man. Regardless of how good either of these banners were, especially the Cell one now, I would have gone all in to pull these two units. So it doesn't really matter to me, but maybe for you guys, it will get you a little bit more excited, convince you a little bit more to summon for these guys. And uh, let me tell you, they're both worth it. Cell, obviously super worth it, but Gohan too, man. He's going to be really, really good. Don't get me wrong, guys. He's going to be great. So uh, don't stress about it too much, guys. Don't worry about it too much. He's going to be fantastic. And uh, it's going to be a good celebration. It's going to be a really, really good celebration. So once again, thank you very much to Dokener for those details. Really interesting. I had a good time reading them and uh, sharing them with you guys. And of course, Tori Tor, Tor, Tor 2. I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right, especially if it's in French. Like I said, bad at French. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, thank you to Tori Tor 2 and Dokener for everything. And hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.